Well, hello there. Welcome everybody to this little tutorial we're going to do in DaVinci Resolve Lite version 12. My name is Tim. I'm going to be walking us through this fairly simple grade where we take this image, uh, which is pretty, it's fairly pretty on its own, um, but we're going to make it look a little bit more fantasy-like and cold. Um, let's throw up this here. There we go. That's what we're going to be making it into. So it's going to be a little bit colder, maybe even look a little bit wet. Uh, when we shot, I helped shoot this, it was for a short film that I did. The ground was actually a little bit wet, but you can't see it as much right now uh, in this shot. But once we do this, it's going to look a little bit darker, colder, wetter. So without any further ado, let's get started. All right, going to our node window, we have one node here just by default. I like to start out by just calling that the look. I always start out, unless I feel like an image really needs some some heavy correction, I just start off with the look that I want right away. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna do that. I'm going down here to my primaries wheels, taking the gamma. Um, I feel like I want this kind of up toward the the purpley magenta area. The highlights are gonna come down into a little bit of a cooler area, maybe somewhere around here. We'll adjust this in a little bit too and then take the whole image and push it kind of cool. Now all that did is really make it look kind of washed out a little bit. Um, so what we need to do is we're gonna add a little bit of contrast. And the way we're gonna do that is by bringing our, our gammas down, we'll bring our highlights up just a little bit, but then we're gonna bring our, our lift down. This will be just a starting point for us and we'll adjust this as we go, but I want this a little bit warmer I think here. Maybe not quite that warm, something like that. I can push these now a little bit cooler, perhaps. We'll see as we go. We can we can determine if we like the way this looks. Hmm, I kind of like that over there. What's this like up here? Let's let's start off with that. Let's say that's good for now. All right, so we have our general look here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a parallel node. So I'm going to hit Alt-P while I have my look node selected, and that creates a parallel node right here. Um, for those who don't know, a parallel node uh, is different from a serial node. A serial node would just take like this thing, and it would add another one in series, so that this node would be adding on to this one, which is building off of the original file. A parallel node, as you can see, is drawing its information from the original source image. This is the the origin, this is the final output. So the reason that's important is what we want to do right now is we want to go in and select her hair. Um, as you can see in this final image, her hair pops out really nicely. So we are going to try and do that here. Let me zoom in so I can select this a little bit better. Get my qualifier back. All right, so let's go over some of her hair. We're just kind of clicking and dragging to try to select what's close. And I hit Shift H, or I can hit this little magic wand thing to toggle on and off what you are selecting. Everything in gray is not selected. Everything that's showing through is selected. So you can see we've got her hair pretty well. But we're also getting a bunch of this other stuff over here, which we don't want. So we are going to go down here to our, our different qualifier adjustments. And we're going to try to dial that in. So let's see. Saturation, let's leave that right about there maybe. Luminance, we don't need a lot of dark stuff in our shot. Well, maybe we do, because otherwise it'll eat in right here. Uh, the high stuff. Yeah, that's one thing. We, because the colors are basically the same from her hair to her skin, we've got to be careful about that. But then also, uh, her skin is brighter. So if we go down here, we can kind of eliminate her skin by trying to remove the higher luminance values from our selection. All right, so let's move this back and forth just to see if we got the right range of colors. I think we do. All right, so that's actually pretty close. Now we're going to blur it a bunch. Let's go up here and zoom in a bit more so we can get a little bit better look at this. Maybe not quite that much. That's a little close. All right. So we saw some stuff right around here by her head. I wonder if I do this. Yeah, we'll lose part of her hair. Hmm, if I take away some of the width here, we don't want that. I don't know if there's really a whole lot more we can do. This is just an 8-bit 
file from a Sony A7S. So we're not working with RAW or anything like that. So what we're going to have to do is, we'll zoom out a little bit more. Uh, there we go. We are going to make a mask, a custom power window around here. So we'll click right here. This is for a custom uh, curve one that we can do. So we'll just take this pen tool and draw it around. Don't need to make too many dots. I'm being really generous with the border here. So I'll probably need to shrink this and move some stuff over. Yeah, I made that too big. I want it to be pretty tight to her head. Because I can also soften the edges here. So I, could have, I have a little bit of wiggle room. Move this in here. Move that up. Alright, we're actually getting pretty close here. So now we're going to add a little bit of softening on the inside and also a little bit on the outside. So if I click off of that, you can see exactly this is what our selection is now in the whole image. I think I want to make this go in a little bit more closer to her head right here as well. Alright, let's see if we can get rid of a little bit more of her skin just by doing this. Yeah, I think that works pretty well. Let's see, I feel like we're kind of cutting off we're losing a little bit here. Let's try that. We got a little bit of it back. All right. Move this in a little bit. Oops. All right. I think that's good. So what we're going to do is, let's see. Let's zoom out just a touch. Let's take off that view so we can actually see the rest of our image here. All right. So with our mask selected here, we're going to track this because in the shot, our our model here is walking and the camera's following her. So there's a lot of movement. Luckily, her back is mostly just to the camera, so it shouldn't be too complicated. But what we're going to do when you use a mask and you track it, the tracker will automatically just kind of by default it'll find its own tracking points within the mask, and it usually works pretty well. But with something like this. The, the tracking points aren't terribly defined, it's just kind of parts of her hair. So they can go haywire a little bit and like just kind of start drifting. So one thing that you can do to help that is, let's see, just take the size of it and bring it down so that it's not trying to find tracking points like on the border of her head and all the leaves. So it'll be just looking right in here. Alright, so let's try this. Another thing that'll help speed along your tracking is uh, bypassing all the grades and the way that you can do that is just by hitting shift D shift D will bypass all the grades so you do that and your computer doesn't have to think about all the color corrections it only has to think about the tracking so we did that let's track it we're tracking forward right now it can track forward or backward but because we were at the beginning of the clip it'll just track forward all right it's kind of a long clip we're almost done and there we go. It kind of seemed like it went pretty well. Let's go back here, take the size and reset it back to what it was. Is it 50? And now let's zoom in a little bit. I'm just going to zoom in here and we're going to watch the track. We're going to see if it actually stuck to her head the right way. So we'll hit play. And it looks like it's working. Let me tilt up a little here. So you see how it's like it's warping as if it's a flat object? That's because of the perspective 3D here. Um, sometimes it works really well. Right now it seems like it is. Other times it gets a little goofy because it loses track of what it's actually trying to do. Uh, but it looks like for our purposes right here it actually worked pretty well. Great. That's awesome. So we'll go back. We'll see what we're actually selecting here. And there's a little bit of her skin coming through. Um, so we could refine, we could go in here, we could kind of tighten this stuff up a little bit, bring these in a little closer, like that maybe. Let's see what we got. Yeah, I think we'll call that good. All right, so let's take this, zoom to fit, you right-click on there, you get these options, zoom to fit, brings it back to fill your screen here. Uh, so the reason we did that, and the reason we had a parallel node is because I want to work off of this original image. Let's turn our grades back on by hitting shift D and now we can go in and just adjust her hair just adjust 
just adjust. Uh, and so we can go in and we can kind of, we can maybe brighten it up a little bit. We can alter the colors a little bit. I basically just want to make it pop. I don't want to make it weird. I could make it like purple or something, but I just want to bring out the red in her hair. I don't really want to make it too weird. Let's bring this back a little bit. All right, let's say that that's good. Um, so we got her hair done. That's great. Now the next thing is looking at her skin. I could just leave her skin kind of this icy cold color if that's what I wanted. But especially since we're kind of making things pop and I don't really like the way her skin looks right now with this look on it, we are going to try to bring that out. So click on my node here, Alt P to add another uh, parallel node. Now we're going to zoom in and we're going to try to select her skin. So I'll bring that in, take my qualifier eyedropper thing, and we're just going to hold, click and drag, and run it along her arm here. Shift H, and we can see what we're selecting. So obviously we got a bunch of the branches and stuff back here, but we actually have her skin like totally solidly selected. So I think it's just a matter of just kind of smartly eliminating other things. So we bring the the width of our colors that we're selecting down, and that took care of a lot of stuff. Let's, let's see, the lower saturated things can go away, but then we're starting to eat into her arm and stuff. Let's soften that. Luminance, let's get rid of the darker stuff. Uh, we're doing pretty good. All right, let's see. So we do have a little bit of her hair still showing up. Let's see, is there any way... Hmm, I don't want to lose her arm. All right, let's see. Bring that up. Yeah, we're getting really close. Don't want to lose that. Let's see if I can move this. All right, so we adjust the center on this. And again, because this is just an 8-bit thing, uh, it can be difficult to get exactly what you want. Um, let's see. Let's clean up some of this stuff here. Clean black, clean white. There we go. Clean up that stuff. I'm really just trying to see if this can remove any of those little artifacts on its own. And it actually did a pretty good job. It removed a lot of her hair stuff. Let's see. It did a really good job with that, I think. We're going to blur this now. You often want to blur your mask so that it just blends better with everything else. All right, so we hit Shift-H to get out of that view, zoom to fit, and now we, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so I can see. We are going to take our wheels here. And we're going to try to give her back some color. And I get to kind of decide what her skin tone is gonna be. So I don't wanna make it too strong, but I do wanna definitely give her some life. Her shoulder here is still looking a little green. Um, let's try to you know what, that's not too bad. Let's go here into our log settings and see if we can just kind of nudge that away. There we go, that's a little bit better. Let's undo that, redo that, there we go. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. We got rid of some of that green there. By the way, in case you didn't know, the primary wheels and the primary bars are linked. They're doing the same thing. They're affecting the same stuff. But log is different, so you can make a log adjustment and it doesn't do anything to your primaries adjustment. It's a nice little tip for you. All right, so we gave her back some skin tone. Uh, got her hair going. Let me get my nodes back in here. So the, the last things that we're gonna do are we're gonna add a serial node out of here. And so I'll name these. By the way, you can name your nodes. This is hair. Uh, this is skin. And we're going to call this Vig for vignette. Uh, we're just going to create a circular power window. 
size it up a little bit. Oops, I don't want to do that. I'll make it a little bit taller. So we just kind of select her right in the middle. Let's actually go back to the beginning of the clip here. There we go. All right, and then we can take the softening little handles. Make this a little bit taller. All right, so we're landing right on her with that. And now what I'm going to do, you can see here in your node window, I'll zoom in, it'll show you a little preview. If you have a mask drawn, it'll show you what is going to be selected. So again, the grayed out stuff is not selected. The image part is selected. So we're selecting the part inside the mask I just drew. We're going to boost up her a little bit. Oops. Yeah. So you can see I'm bringing up just kind of the highlights here to give her a little boost. And now, a neat little trick, if you want to darken the outside, you don't have to draw a whole new mask. Just right click on that and hit outside node, and it takes the mask information, this little blue arrow, transfers it here, and then inverts it. So you have your outside control. So we're going to take that and use that to darken the outside of this, like that. Cool. Let's see. Let's bring that down just a touch, make it a little bit more dramatic. And this actually, I feel like I want this to not be quite like that. Let's make it a little bit, uh, well, you know what? I don't know. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's just kind of finessing. I could adjust this, this grade if I wanted to. But to be honest, I think you got the point. It's kind of a fantasy look. We can make it however we want. So that's it. And now we can play through it. And our hair stuff is tracked. Her skin doesn't need to be tracked. And so we've got this nice fantasy look of her in the woods. And it didn't take too long. But now that we know how to do it and we have all this stuff built, we can just copy this to other shots. And then if we need to retract something, we can. Um, but yeah, that's it. I hope it was helpful for you. I hope you learned a few things. My name is Tim. I will see you next time.